there is an uncomfortable truth when it gets to getting into the wholesaling real estate business. When you start getting into wholesaling real estate and making some money, or heck, if you haven't made your first dollar yet, you need to really come to grips on some uncomfortable truths and some things that you probably don't want to hear, but you need to hear. If you are dead serious right now about making 100K your first year, heck, a million dollars plus your first year, you're going to have to understand these fundamental things. So many people want to make a million dollars wholesaling houses, but they're not willing to do what it takes to make a million dollars wholesaling houses. And the first thing we have to do is work with our brains. We'll work with what's up here first, because once we understand what's up there, we can start doing a lot better because a lot of wholesalers, they, they want to know the secret. Like, what? why am I not becoming successful, right? Or like, what is stopping me from getting rich? What is stopping me from getting this first deal or the second deal or, you know, getting some momentum or heck, even making 100K this year, right? Like, everybody wants to know that that secret cure, that, that secret thing. And the number one thing is just fixing your brain and, and your mind. And th that's honestly like when, when I talk to wholesalers and we do these one-on-ones and when we answer questions, the number one thing is just making their mind better, right? And I think I need to really have a sit down talk with you today on exactly what it takes to become successful. Because I truly believe everybody wants to get rich, right? Everybody wants all the cool stuff that comes with it. But most people aren't willing to do the sacrifice that it takes. And really, people never understand this concept, but wholesaling real estate, what is given is always taken away. And what I mean by that is whatever you give to wholesaling, it usually spits it back out at you. And so if you sacrifice a lot, wholesaling real estate will give you a lot. If you sacrifice a little, it's going to give you a little. And I'm not telling you to sacrifice you know, your, your years of your life for nothing, right? I'm not telling you to stop hanging out with your family, kids, wife, spouse, things like that, right? I'm not telling you to do this stupid stuff, right? But what I am fundamentally telling you to do today is really get up. <laughs> I mean, you, you really got to get up from your lazy bum lifestyle and your, your lifestyle of just getting by and just getting through the day and really start making the change to actually become successful. And what I want to do is kind of do a step-by-step -step thing of some uncomfortable truths you need to understand that really helped me break through my business. And that's going to help you break through in your wholesaling real estate operations. But it's, it's going to be sad uh, for a lot of gurus because, you know, the, the average real estate wholesaling guru is going to try to tell you, oh, you need to go buy this course. That's going to keep you successful. But it's not the truth. You have to make changes. And uh, until you decide that you are going to make a change, nothing is going to change at all. So to change, you must make a change. And that change is very important here. And if you do not make the change, you'll not change your life, your business, or anything worthwhile at all in wholesaling real estate. And so the first thing we have to talk about, and, and the first thing that is kind of sad for most people, right? And, and the thing that's so sad that nobody understands here is nobody, and I mean nobody, is coming to save you. And that, that's the first thing I have to tell you nobody is going to be your, your knight in shining armor. Nobody's going to be that person in the cape to go out here and save you and, 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 and change your life like this, right? I think a lot of wholesalers think that's what's going to happen, right? So some, some magic guru is going to come out here and, and change everything for me, right? That that's going to, you know, it, it's, it's, oh, I need to get innovations, right? That that's the thing that I have to do, right? That's the thing going to save me. That's, that's the real reason why I'm not successful, guys. Is it's just I, I'm doing the wrong method. I'm in the wrong, I, I'm in the wrong lake uh, for fishing, right? I, I'm in the I'm, I'm in the wrong pond, right? This this is a common misconception people believe, right? And this is just human nature. You, you know that, that's what gurus really love going after, right? That, that they love thinking that oh, there's actually a secret, and that's why you're not successful, right? And what I mean by that is, why do you think? Let's not talk about wholesaling. Let's talk about just real estate specific. Uh, let's just talk about the world, right? Ever since you were in the 1500s, the 1600s, 1700s, right? There's always been the magic pill for beauty, right? Or weight loss or like something desirable, right? And people go off of people's insecurities all the time, right? And they try to profit from this. It's just entrepreneurship throughout 
thousands of millennia, millennia on human beings, right? Everyone's to, every woman's to be beautiful, right? And what we used to do is we used to sell these magic snake oil things, right? You know, injuries, beauty, and things like this. We're like, oh, you drink this mulberry juice extract uh, that I got from an ancient shaman, and you will be as beautiful as a thousand uh, queens. Or, you know, they, they always used to do that, right? And, you know, the only thing stopping you from becoming the most beautiful person ever is just this little oil. Uh, from from the fresh coconut of Fiji, that's going to make you de-ageify fifty thousand years, right? And they're like everyone's at 70, 80, 90 years old. Of course, they want to look like they're twenty and feel like they're twenty, right? That's at, of course when you get older, you want to be younger. Like we get it, right? We all everyone tries to stop aging. And there's always ever since that, you know, there's always been someone saying there's this there's this secret cure that no one's done. You just got to do this, and you'll be twenty years old again, right? And they, they feed off of that, like, oh, this is what you really want? Well, you just got to give me money and that's going to be the solution. And, you know, the special mulberry oil cream doesn't make you look like you're 20. You still look like you're 84, right? But, but, but everybody thinks there's this magic thing and this magic solution that's, that's going to save everything. And there's just some things in life that you can't do shortcuts around, right? Oh, I want a six pack? Well, just go drink the special juice and you'll get a six pack instantly, right? And it, it don't work like that. Like just... People really want the magic cure, the magic pill. And to this day, it, it happens all the time. And when we look at wholesaling real estate, we, we look at you trying to get rich and making money and get all these nice, fancy things that you want. Nobody is going to go out here and save you. Nobody is going to go out here and give you this magic cure, this pill, this complete change. You are going to have to be your own hero. And if you decide you don't want to be your own hero and you don't want to save yourself, then you will die. And I'm not saying that in a, like a literal sense, but like your dreams will die. And that's a pretty scary dang thing that your dreams will die. You will not get rich. You'll stay your broke self. And you know, for some people that's okay. They're okay with that. But for most people watching this, they want something better in their lives. They want, they want something more special. And that's why you're watching this. You're not watching this to, to hear me talk because I'm so handsome and cool. You're doing this because you know I have the ability to change your life if you can just do the hard work. And I'm just trying to have a quick convo with you on this, maybe a hard one, but th these, I hate gurus. Everyone knows this, but like your, your, your mentor, your coach, right? Whoever is teaching you wholesaling, heck, even me, right? If you're going through my free wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com, I'm your boxing coach. You know, I, I, I'm in the, I'm outside the ring telling you what to do, but I'm not the guy boxing in the ring. Like I, I'm not the one with my hands up, like pah, going nuts, right? I can root for you. I can give you advice in between rounds, but I'm not going to be in the fight with you. And a lot of wholesalers believe, you know, buying this course, it's going to change everything, right? They're going to do everything for me. No, no. I can help you in the corner, but I ain't, I ain't the one with the gloves on. And, you know, that's a very scary concept for a lot of people. It's like, wait, you're not going to do all the work for me? No. I, I'm not going to be the one doing the punching for you. I'm not going to be the person cutting the weight for you. I'm not going to be doing any of this stuff. You, as the wholesaler, have to do all this stuff. And I, I truly believe everyone thinks there's this magic thing that, that's like, oh, you're going to do everything for me. And it, 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 wholesaling don't work like that. You have to do this is a wholesaling is a combat sport not a contact sport it's a combat sport and a combat sport the reason why combat sports are so cool is there's no teams there's none of the stuff right the only thing and i i swear to you okay i swear the only thing when it comes to combat sports it's you versus the opponent that is what combat sports are all about. You versus the opponent. And I don't care about anything else outside. It's you versus the opponent. And what that means is it doesn't matter how tired you are the last night. It doesn't matter how much your knee hurts. It doesn't matter how hungry you are. When you put those gloves on and the ding ding goes on, it's you versus the other person and they both want to kill and that other person wants to kill you and you need to, you need to go punch that guy and they both want to punch you. 
and there's no one there to protect you. You can't hide behind someone. You, and if you win, you get all the glory. The coaches get, yeah, good job from him. But like, he, he don't get the glory. You get the glory. The problem is if you get punched in the face, everyone sees it. Everyone sees you get knocked down. Everyone sees like, if you give up, you give up because you just got smacked in the face. And there's no hiding there, right? And, and that's the thing about success and wholesaling real estate is you, you can't fake your way to a win in boxing, right? You can't fake your way for that, right? Either you're better and you've put in the hours, you've put in the dedication, and you've actually put the hard work in your in your training and in, in your skills, or you were partying the night before and you didn't really put in your all effort. And you know for a fact the other guy put his all effort in. You will lose. And that's why I love combat sports. And I did combat sports in high school, right? A little jujitsu, mostly uh, wrestling, right? Uh, boxing training, never did a, did an actual like boxing match. Uh, but like, I could tell you from my experience with combat sports, it, it, it's you versus the opponent. And who most of the time, it, it's kind of like basketball. Kobe Bryant said this best, especially with wholesaling and combat sports, where I think it's a great metaphor is you don't win the boxing match, right? You, you never win by beating the other guy in the ring. And what I mean by that is you win in the practice. That's when you really win, right? You, you win in the preparation, the tens of thousands of hours you put in leading up to that moment is what really is going to dictate if you won or not, right? Kobe Bryant, this, there's this one fadeaway shot he always used to make. He destroy the heat on. And this certain fadeaway shot, he's, tr he's practiced 20,000 times. It seems like he just randomly did it, but like this is something he was randomly. He's practiced this fadeaway side three point win jump shot hours a day for like 20 years straight. So it's not a coincidence or luck he got out here and actually made that shot. It wasn't him in that moment. It was the tens and hundreds of thousands of type of shots he's done. So when that moment came, automatically made it, right? And it's always a you versus the opponent. And the shocking part about this is in wholesaling real estate, you don't have another guy boxing you. It's your opponent is yourself. It's the guy or gal in the mirror. It's not your competition. It's it's you. And here's that you are you are competing against yourself. And that's really what I found from wholesalers who actually become successful, that actually get rich, that actually make changes in their life. You are going against yourself. And the question is every single day, did you beat yourself or did you lose to yourself? Because human beings and, and the human brings a weird thing. It, most human beings are trained with our, um, I forget the term. I, I've read it a lot. Uh, human beings are, they're cut in like a, in a um, pattern mindset, a mindset of comfort. And this is not a bad thing. I mean, this, the mindset of comfort, even since we were a caveman was like this, right? To be comfortable. And so if we have a saber toothed tiger in front of us, we, we get scared and we want to run away because, you know, that thing could kill me. And when I'm eating a warm, nice steak uh, uh, of a buffalo, I, I, you know, I got when I was a caveman, you know, it tasted good and that was comfortable and nice. And my brain's like, do more of that, right? And that has led to human beings, you know, e evolving in culture and science and, and you know, modern luxuries, <laughs> you know, like chairs and air conditioning, right? Because uh, human beings always seek comfort, right? And so, you know, AC in Florida, you know, I, you know, this is weird human being thinking works really well. But the problem is it could also be, it's a double-edged sword because it, it sparks innovation in society, but it could also keep you complacent. And what I mean by this is sitting on the couch right now, watching Netflix, right? That That's way more comfortable right now than getting on those phones and cold calling. Way more cozy to watch your Netflix and your mind-numbing TV show. But you know... Being broke, you're going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel terrible. And it, it's kind of like weird because like you're choosing comfort now, but you're going to be uncomfortable for the rest of the time when you're not in your comfort Netflix mode, right? And it's kind of funny because uh, I see so many people party hard in college and enjoy themselves. And when they're out of it, they're suffering at a job they hate, right? And they got kids and all their free time has gone when 
if you just grinded during those college years, you don't have to deal with that BS for 50, 60 years. But the truth is most people will choose the the, the fun times in college. And I, I've always refused the notion that college is the best years of your life. And I see so many people that college, I, I know 27, 28, 29 year, 30 year olds were, huh, they're, they're six, seven years out of college. And those four years of college were the best years of their life. And they're always going to be the best years of their life. And they're never going to have any better years. Could you imagine that you're 24 years old like me right now? And the best years you're ever going to live are behind you. That's so sad. That 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 legitimately gives me nightmares knowing that what if the best most enjoyable years of my life are already behind me. That's scary. That that's that's really scary stuff, guys. And if that doesn't make your skin crawl, if that doesn't make you really uncomfortable, we, we you got to get off this stream right now because we're at a point now where the best years of your life are going to still, even if you're 75, you want to get in the hole and get rich. The best years of your life are still ahead of you, right? Because it is what you make it. And so you have to really understand this concept that the best years of your life are ahead of you if you decide to change now, not tomorrow, not, not yesterday, you know, not, 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 not in a week, not in a month, not when, you know, the holidays are over, but now legitimately now. And so you have to understand that the opponent is yourself, not your competition. And specifically, not you, you, right? You know, you know you're know, you probably a good guy or gal watching this, right? You're, you're probably a, a really good person. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, bad, but the one thing I could tell you is the, the you that you are right now, it's fine, but the person you have to beat is the, uh, can't say this word on YouTube, uh, but the sissy you, the uh, the baby you, the weak version of yourself, the, the little baby you. And what I mean by that is there are two versions of you. And I have this version deep down inside of myself. And I, I have learned uh, since basically I was 17 years old to squash this person deep, deep, deep down in my brain that they can't come out. They're kind of locked in a cell. Um, but th that little person uh, th that's weak, they, they crawl out sometimes, right? I mean, sometimes when I wake up in the morning and I'm tired, that person tells me, oh, hey, you're, you're tired today, Zach. You should you should just rest. You've earned it, right? You don't need to get up, right? Oh, yeah. You're sore. You don't need to work out. You don't really need to like really do that thing today, right? You just, just, just relax, man. It's okay. And you, you can't let that person give in that, that, that little baby you, that, that little, that little, that little you that seeks the comfort all the time. And that, you know, the person that seeks comfort all the time when I'm chilling out on vacation, whatever, sure. Like let that person out, relax. But a lot of you guys get really, really stuck in this mindset of just what's comfortable in the moment and never look at the future and what, what all these things can lead to in my future. Right. It's always about the now. And you know, I, I get the now, but if you just do that, you're, you're going to perpetually stay broke and you're never going to get out of the cycle of job, 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 and you're just going to get nowhere. And so you have to be the weak version of yourself because they're, Everyone's got that version of them that, that's super weak, super tired, that they don't want to go out here and grind it out, right? That they, they don't want to do the crazy work, the, the, the fun stuff, right? They want to stay out here and be a little baby. You have to defeat that version because that version of you doesn't want you to work hard. Doesn't want they want you to get rich, but they don't want you to work hard to get rich, right? And that is a contradictive statement. You cannot work hard and not get rich. You you can't. I, actually, heck, you can work hard and then get, be poor. That happens all the time, right? You can be a dishwasher working 50 hours a week. That's hard work at minimum wage still being broke. Plenty of people work hard and stay broke. I'd rather you just transfer that into something that'll make you more money. And so like spending 50 hours a week as a dishwasher is not easy stuff. It's it hurts your back. Like I, I used to be a dishwasher at the uh, soup kitchen as like a volunteer. Woo, stuff ain't fun. 
I'll tell you that it's painful, but like someone's got to do it. Right. And that stuff will hurt your back. It's tiring. You're thirsty all the time. The dishes are super hot coming out the thing, the, the washing thing. Like it's, it's not enjoyable. And it's really hard work, I'll tell you. I, I, I mean, I, I used to do like two or three hours of that, right? Um, that's not fun, FYI. And thinking about if I just that is way easier than drying for dollars, negotiating with sellers and talking to them, right? But the funny thing here is people would rather stay in that thing because it's just little. You got to skip. You're uncomfortable here, but then when you're out of it, you just oh, chill out, right? Do nothing all day. When if you just go out here and keep that pace up of being in pain and suffering and you just keep doing that eventually and you just pour that into wholesaling, that type of effort, you can easily get rich. People aren't willing to do it. You have to learn to go all in. So you have to ask yourself this question, who's going to win? The, the baby you? The, 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 little, the little baby you? The, the, the weak-minded person? Or is the version of you going to win that actually is going to work hard, actually is going to become successful, actually wants to go out here and do what they need to do every single day? You have to ask yourself this question today and right now. What version of myself is going to win out and become a great wholesaler? What version of myself is going to go out here and do what I need to do every single day? This is a question you have to ask yourself. That is the first uncomfortable truth and, and probably one I, I see a lot of wholesalers get very, very weirded out by. They don't like hearing about it, but I'm telling you, if you can get over this, this little painful thing, I promise you, you can get rich. You, you can do very, very well. If you're not, it, it's over. You, you won't be able to do it, right? And the next thing I want to talk about here is if you can't commit to yourself about five hours a week at minimum, you'll never become successful wholesaling. I, I hate to tell you this, if you can't commit to at least five hours of learning wholesaling, doing it, practicing, talking to the motivated sellers, you're never going to become a successful wholesaler. This is an evident, evident truth that if you do not do this, it, it's never going to happen for you. You're never going to get rich. You're never going to get successful with this. If you cannot put five hours a week in this, you're not going to do it, right? If you're not willing to put in the time, or put the money and you can't do it, right? You can put in the money if you don't have too much time. But if you don't have the time to really dedicate to really know where to put in the money like the right way, you're screwed. And so you have to ask yourself this question today. It's just like, okay, how much time am I willing to put in this business? Like learning wholesaling, doing it, becoming success, like all these things. What, what are you willing to do? And I'll tell you, if you cannot commit five hours a week, you cannot commit to becoming successful. If you cannot commit to going out here and doing what you need to do every single dang day, you won't get, you won't get rich wholesale. And so you have to commit. You have to do the change. You have to become successful. You have to. If, if not, you're going to be broke. You know, you're not on here watching this because you're broke. You do this because you want to change. And the only way you make a change is by making a change yourself. To change, you must change. If you're not willing to change, you're going to stay broke. I'm not telling you, you have to do this. I'm telling you, you have to. And so if you can't face it, right? If, I'll say this so many times. Who wrote this? I think I have fat fingers today, uh, right? That, but if you can't face your fears of the phones and really, really have a legitimately like heart to heart talk with yourself, right? If you can't face your fears of the phones, you will be broke. If you can't fear, f face your fear of actually talking to a seller, oh, it's, it's a little uncomfortable today having a conversation with the seller, right? And you know, I, I see a lot of beginner wholesalers like this, you know saying hello, giving an offer, building rapport. If any of those things scare the snot out of you, like having a legitimate conversation with a motivated seller, 
that is off market, you know, no FISBO, no MLS. If that scares you right now, we need to have a real conversation. Like why? Why is having a conversation with another human being scary to you? Is it because they're going to say something to offend you? Are they going to say, are they going to call you a poopy head? Like we got to have a real conversation. You're like, why? Why do we have such a fear of having a conversation with this person? How, why do we have such a fear of talking to this type of person? Right. If you can't face your fear of the phones, you will be broke. If you can't face your fear of talking to sellers, if you can't face your fear of just having a conversation, cold calling, following up, right? I said, heck, it's crazy. People need these softwares to follow up because they're just so scared to you, right? They want, everyone wants everything automated. They want AI to do all the work. Just, you just have to have that conversation. Heck, I'm having a conversation with you. If, if you're at least 18 years old, right? You've had 18 years of just conversations with people. Well, why is the next one so scary, right? And I, heck, I know with my generation, you know, there's a lot of really cool entrepreneurs. There's really cool, um, motivated individuals in our generation. Probably you watching this, but there's also in my generation, my age, there's a lot of people that are scared little babies that they're just, that they don't want to have any social interaction, right? If you're my age, you probably know some of these people, right? You're on TikTok all day. You're texting, you know, you know, when it comes to kind of talk to people. Uh, in person, you go, oh, you're social anxiety and awkward because you just, oh, let me go back to texting you. So many people are like this. And the only way you just have to face the fear and get, get over it, get comfortable, you're going to go. And this goes back to our, my generation of just it mentally being weak and just doing what, what, what makes me feel comfortable. Oh, wait, the, having a conversation is not comfortable with it, right? It's insane to me. Are you more comfortable being broke or you're more comfortable, more uncomfortable just having a conversation with another person? If you always feel comfortable in wholesaling, you will be broke. Every time I've grown, I was uncomfortable in everything pretty much I've done in wholesaling. Starting virtual wholesaling, uncomfortable. Cold calling, uncomfortable. First talk with a motivated seller, uncomfortable. Putting banner signs out, uncomfortable. I just, every single new thing I did, I was uncomfortable. Heck, even when I started SMS text blasting back in the day, 2018, back in the day, right? That was six years ago. Whoa. That was six years ago, 2018. Wow. Holy moly. Okay. Um, that's weird to say. All right. But if, whenever, I got uncomfortable. I always made more money. And th this is one thing I've always heard. And you know, ah, be uncomfortable, you got to grow. <laughs> but like looking back, every single point where I got uncomfortable, heck, my first virtual deal, all these things, is because I wasn't used to it. There's a lot of, not anxiety, but just like what ifs could happen. But at the other end of it, I got comfortable with it and it was fine. And now comfort for me is making millions of dollars wholesaling houses. Like, that's cool. And so if you want to become rich, you have to become uncomfortable. Do things that scare you. I challenge anyone. I, we have a streamer link here. You can talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Have a conversation with me today. And I want to get to the, to the point. Face your fears and talk to me. I'm not a scary guy. I ain't going to scream at you. I might scream at you, actually. If, if, if you do, a, if, if you try to sell a guru course, I might scream at you. But like, legitimately, I want the best for you. But a lot of you guys need kind of a slap in the face. A lot of you guys don't have a, a figure in your life telling you to stop being a little baby about your life and actually make a dang change. Because everyone in your life right now around you, possibly I, possibly I am the only person in, in your vicinity life that's telling you to stop being a little baby and actually go reach your dreams because everyone has already quit on the dreams, given up on the dreams. You know what a salary is? A salary is a designated amount of money for you to give up on your dreams for. It's a contract. I will give you this money. You don't do your dreams. That's what a salary is. It is literally a matrix, right? That they give you nutrition in the matrix just to fend you off, to keep you in the in the in the hive mind type thing and to keep you there. If you feel comfortable, you'll always be broke.
and just have this understanding in your mind. But history does not remember weak men. Think about that very carefully. History does not remember or look at weak men well. And so the men and women that have always made the greatest changes in society, the world, ever since they started writing about people, they were never weak. Never. They always made changes. They always pushed the boundaries that you need to do to become successful. They always did the things that made you feel a little weird, a little, a little uncomfortable, right? History does not remember weak men. History remembers strong men. And if you want to become a person in your family history, the history of your family, the history of you getting rich, the history of you changing everything right now, you cannot be weak. You must be strong. Being weak is not for the, for the faint of heart because you will not be remembered. And you have to understand, to make a change, you must change. And hopefully today's the day you decide, hey, I'm not going to be weak anymore. I'm going to be strong. What are you going to be remembered for? Being weak or strong in your family's history? I'm telling you. There's, <laughs> you got to make, hey, this, this guy was the guy that started wholesaling, got us rich, started creating that generational wealth, poured the assets and the rentals, the stocks, whatever it is. That, hey, we don't have to struggle anymore as a family because this man decided to make that change. I know my family, I'm one of those people. Do you want to be that type of person in your family? It's up to you. I, history does not remember weak men. Please remember this very, very importantly. History does not remember weak men. They remember strong men and you must be strong. If you are not strong, you will not be remembered. This is very important. Now, next concept here, um, an uncomfortable truth. I don't think enough beginner wholesalers understand is an offer a day keeps the guru away. Let me repeat myself. An offer a day keeps the guru away. Let me make sure. I thought the internet went out for a second. All right, we're all good. All right. An offer day keeps the guru away. And what I mean by an offer day keeps the guru away is if you and wholesaling real estate decide to yourself, hey, I'm going to run an operation where I do so much marketing, so much marketing that I can make at least one offer day to a motivated seller. If you can tell yourself, I can make one offer day to a motivated seller, you don't have to worry about no stu stupid wholesaling guru. You don't have to do any of this stuff. You can just make an offer. And if you can make 300 offers, the, oh, you can get rich. And if you could, if some person says, hey, I want to sell my property and you can make a legitimately cash offer on their house, you are going to get wholesaling deals. An offer day keeps the guru away. Now, the next concept that is uncomfortable to know that people don't understand is the art of patience. Wholesaling real estate is a 26.2 mile race, not a 100 meter sprint. And what I mean by that is wholesaling real estate is a marathon, not a sprint. It is 26.2 miles. And what I mean by, why is I saying, why do I keep saying 26.2? Because 26.2 miles is the official length of a marathon. And the truth is in wholesaling, just like a marathon, the point of a marathon for most people and I, I did this in 2020, I actually ran a marathon, trained for it, did the whole thing. One of the toughest things I've done to this date, right? It's always mental toughness with me, right? The, that marathon sucked. But the point of a marathon is not to get it in under two hours or, or an hour and a half, right? The, the, the point of a marathon is just to do it. I did a marathon, right? That, that's that's pretty dang gangster. Right? That's pretty cool. I did a marathon, right? The point of the marathon is to do that. And so what that, what that means is there are people that walk marathons. There's people that 
sprint marathons. Uh, there's people that run the whole thing and don't stop. Right? Everyone's got their own thing. Mine was to run it and never stop, right? Just keep a decent pace, right? That, that was pretty cool for me. But just finishing it is the thing in itself because it's it's a journey. It is, oh, it's grueling. It's not a sprint. And what I mean by that is a lot of people expect to get the whole marathon done in five seconds, in like um, an hour, and you know, in 30 minutes, right? It, it ain't going to happen. It's it's a tough thing. And the cool thing about just doing the marathon was for me, my goal is just to do a marathon, right? So I trained so hard for it. That's what I did, right? And the cool part about that was when I ran that marathon, the, the my objection was to just finish the marathon, just finish the marathon, right? That, that was my object, objective. It wasn't to sprint it. It was just to finish it. Just like wholesaling real estate, the only way I would ever fail in that goal is if I just stopped running. I just quit. If I wasn't quitting and I was going forward, I was getting closer. I was going from 7.1 miles to 7.2 miles to 7.3 miles. I was still going, it might've been slower paced and then I'll speed up a little. Then slow, but like, I was just getting to that point. And same thing in wholesaling. It's 26.2 miles. And what I mean by that is you just get closer to that goal every single day. And it doesn't matter if you just got a little bit farther or just barely any farther. You just got closer to that goal. And you only lose when you quit. You, you never finished a marathon when you're running it, right? It's only when you're done, but you're still in the progress of doing it. And so for everyone here feeling like they're quitting and they're not getting it, it's a, it's a marathon, Okay. Maybe your marathon's 300 miles. Maybe your marathon's 10 miles, right? Whatever that first deal marathon is, it's a marathon, not a sprint. You cannot get there quick. It is consistency. A marathon is consistently running 26, basically 26 uh, one-mile races consecutively without stopping. That, that's what a marathon is, right? You're running 26 one-mile races or 52 half-mile races consecutively, right? And what wholesaling real estate is, it's it's doing 800 days of work sometimes or three, 200 days of work, a cold calling every day and just not quitting, right? Maybe that's your marathon, right? Maybe it's 30 days. Maybe it's seven days, right? It, it, different for everyone getting that first deal. But the point of it is you just don't lose until you quit. So if you just keep going every day, you're not, you're not a loser and you're getting close to that goal. Even if you feel like you're not getting, you are getting closer there. Even when you don't feel like that, you are getting closer. And the concept that I always tell everyone about this, especially when it comes to marketing and, and getting successful, right? You cannot expect to drive in your car from New York City to LA on one tank of gas. I know it's a silly analogy. I love this analogy because it's part of the most true analogy for wholesaling real estate. But a lot of you guys expect, your expectations are stupid, all right? I have to be honest, some of y'all, your expectations are dumb. You expect to drive in your Toyota, I don't know, your, your Toyota Corolla, okay? You expect to drive from New York City to LA, New York, California, like two, 3,000 miles with one tank of gas, right? No, you, you are not, your car gets 30 miles to the gallon, hon. And so, you have to understand this. It's just like some people expect, hey, I'm going to put one gallon. You ask me, you literally ask me, how do I put one gallon of gas in my car and get from New York City to LA? It's just like, what? It's crazy. People literally ask me this stuff. I feel like I'm crazy. I'm like, what? What, what are you talking What You got to tell me how to do it. What? Blech. You know, how do I run a, a, a mile in, in 30 seconds? It's just like, Getting an F-16 jet. Like, I, geez, Louise, man. You know, you guys will ask me this stuff. And I'm like, what do I tell you? You cannot get from LA to New York City in one gallon of gas. You have to put in enough gas to get, schedule it out and go from that distance, right? And what I mean is, like, I've had people call me on these one-on-one -on -one calls. and be like, Zach, I'm making four cold calls a day. Why am I not a millionaire? It's like, homeboy, you're putting you're putting five minutes of work a day in and that you're expecting to become a millionaire. Like you don't work like that. I'd have a network of $30 billion if that was the case, right? Wholesaling real estate at the concept of this business, 
It will get anyone rich that wants to put in the work. Wholesaling real estate discriminates, but it doesn't discriminate like most businesses, right? If you want to become a realtor, a, a realtor registered trademark, oh, nice little pin suit. And, you know, I love, you know, I love realtors, right? They're the best. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I love them as much as I love the uh, New York Jets. But what I can tell you is realtors, realtors discriminate. Being a real estate agent is a business where they discriminate. They discriminate based off of your age, your education, what you look like, right? Appearance is everything in that business. And most importantly, you know, if you have a uh, bad past or not, right? If you have a criminal history, they usually won't let you become a realtor. So if, hey, I want to make money in real estate. You know, you didn't, you don't have a GED. I ain't going to allow you to do it. How does having a GED affect me if it's a business? Like it's, nope, you're not educated enough. That's discrimination. Yeah, we're discriminating against you based on your education. If you've had a felony before, if all these things. It's like, even if you've had it, like I've never had a felony, right? Never committed a crime in my life. Um, thought about it against some gurus once. Just kidding. Um, you know, you know, I, I've, I've always had thoughts of, you know, what would happen if I, I decided to just, you know, hack all the gurus accounts and just, you know, not, just very small things, you know, hacking their website and changing their thousand dollar course to zero dollars just for funsies. Um, I've always considered, you know, that I've never acted on that criminal behavior before, but you know, the thoughts have always come to mind. Um, just joking, obviously. You know, hit me up. Um, any good hackers? Just kidding. Um, you know, I you know, I get enough good free stuff. It's okay. But you know, some of the greatest people on earth uh, that I personally know, you know, they they've had felonies before. And it's not like they've physically assaulted people or something, right? Some people just get in bad situations when they're young. And they make big changes. And, you know, everyone changes. Um, but realtors will discriminate based on for that. They discriminate based off your age. They discriminate based on your education. They will discriminate based on where you were born. I know a lot of realtors that discriminate what you look like, which is a terrible thing to do. And it's it's crazy to me. A lot of realtors will discriminate based off how you look too, um, and how you present yourself and how you talk and all this crazy stuff. And when it comes to real estate, you look at every single one, it's all about discrimination. It's terrible. I hate it. But the one thing about wholesaling real estate I love is they don't discriminate by stuff of any of that stuff, any of that stupid stuff, where you were born, what you look like, how tall you are, what your age is, what your past might have been as long as you become a better person, right? All these things people discriminate against that are terrible. The only thing wholesaling real, real estate discriminates on, which I truly believe this is, is merit. And it's a crazy thing to say, right? But wholesaling real, estate, wholesaling real estate only discriminates off the work you've done. And so if you've put not a lot of effort in your cold calling, wholesaling real estate will discriminate and not get you rich. If you put your all into this business and get better, wholesaling real estate will discriminate and say, you've put in your all, I'm going to get you handsomely rich. That's why I love this business. Truly, truly in wholesaling real estate. If you decide you want it and you're willing to put in the effort, you'll do it. Wholesaling real estate used to be a thing with the gurus where there is there are little trolls under a bridge. If you don't give me three gold coins, I can't let you pass. It used to be wholesaling, right? Now I've given, I've kind of punched these little little tiny goblins, right? They're all little, they're little short goblins, all of them. Um, don't mean that literally. Sometimes I mean that literally. I don't know, um, but. You know, I say crazy stuff in my own live stream. Do I say things that are not true? I usually speak facts. But some things I sometimes I try to be funny, sometimes I don't. I I, I gotta stop myself sometimes. Um, but I like talking smack against little troll, tiny short gurus. Um the shorter the guru, the the more of a troll they are. That's what I've personally found. Um but <laughs> Oh boy. Um, what, what, what I mean by this is these little troll gurus, right? You know, they, they, they say, give me my gold and I will show you the riches of wholesaling. When it's like, what are you talking about? I can just walk around your little troll bridge and just 
go to the village myself. You have to go under the bridge. It's just nuts. You just, just punch the little gremlin and just go through the, through the bridge. That's what I do. That's what I did. And so basically what I did is I created my own little troll bridge and I just got rid of the troll and just said, come through. It's free. So I used to, that's how I've taught in wholesaling real estate for free to hundreds of thousands of people. And to this day, me and Rick are the only ones, they're, they're the only bridge that doesn't have a nasty little short troll on them. And you can go through whenever you want, right? And the funny part here in wholesaling real estate is if you just decide that you want to get educated for free, which you can on this YouTube channel, and you want to put the hard work, you'll get rich. I've shown a lot of people how to get rich. You know, they, they want to sell you a $10,000 course, a $15,000 course, a $50,000 course. I, I've seen crazy ones. The $100,000 courses are coming out. I've seen a lot of $30,000 ones now. Um, these gurus are just getting more ridiculous. It, it's honestly sad. But what you have to understand is to beat the trolls, you must just work hard and just the thing about trolls is if you don't believe they exist, they don't exist, right? That they feed off of attention. And what I mean by that is if you don't pay the trolls, the trolls go away. They're like, oh, we, we can't make money off the bridge. I guess we got to go to another bridge. And you see a lot of wholesaling gurus, trolls, whatever you want to call them. Uh, if they can't make enough money in the wholesaling business, they, 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 they start a, a Forex business or they start an Amazon FBA thing or they, they start a a Turo car rental business and they try to sell a little mentorship on that, right? Because they're trolls. They're not wholesale. They're not wholesalers. They're little trolls, right? That's how this business works. They're little trolls. And the only way to defeat the troll is to get rich without the troll. And then you let people know that you can get rich without using a little short, tiny troll. Then you're good to go. Uh, th th then you're fine by that, right? And so I know I'm going crazy here, but in wholesaling real estate, you're only discriminated based off of the work you do. You only get discriminated in wholesaling real estate by the work you put in. That is it. If you want to put the hard work in, you will get rich. If you don't, if you do not want to work hard, you'll stay broke. Easy as easy as pie, this business. Guys, I have a free wholesaling course where I teach you how to real learn wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. No trolls allowed on here. No short, little, tiny trolls. Just freehosting.com information. And uh, everything I say satire. Everything I say is for comedic effect. I legally, my lawyer makes sure I tell you this. I don't mean anything I say. You know, why would I ever say anything? Why, why would I ever say any of the things I say? You know, do I know everything about most gurus? Yes, I do. Do I know all the dirt? Do I have stuff in a safe? on a USB drive, just like Drake. Yes, I do. Do I have a lot of incriminating evidence against gurus that will end them? Yes. Why do I not release them? Because it keeps the gurus at bay. What I mean by this is there's about 17, 15, 16, 17 gurus that I all have insane dirt on that I have on a USB and they know I have on the USB. And if I, if, if any of these gurus ever attack me, the file on them gets released. And I've released files before. People know this. And there's been very, very specific cases where I've released files on gurus that I have dirt on. And once the dirt comes out there, reputation's done. Um, and so the reason why you don't see gurus make videos on me any, anymore, they used to, uh, is because they know I got the DMs from their wives. They know I got the the, the truths on, their, on the... Mm, can I say... I can't say that. There are three gurus I can think of right now that don't use the real name. Uh, they use fake names. Uh, not going to get in there right now. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of things that I have. There's a lot of things that I know that I have on a USB in a safe. And if something ever happened to me, um, <laughs> I have friends that know how to get into this information and uh, share it to me. Right. That's all I can tell you. Um, and what I mean by this is the reason why gurus don't make videos against me anymore is um, first of all they don't want to promote me. Because uh, I have a free course. And second, most importantly, uh, it will hurt them more than anything. And so the guru zombie apocalypse is in my control. And so what I mean by this is I have a free Olsen course. It's called freeolsen.com. Yes, I have a lot of fun trolling people that literally trolling a trolls, trolling them. That's why I call them trolls. Uh, I like trolling gurus. Uh, that I, honestly, it, it's all fun and games, but legitimately, I, I'm telling the truth truthfully. 
Uh, I do have dirt on most gurus. Um, not all. There's some actually stand-up ones I'll say that's like wholesale real estate legitimately that sell courses I'm not the biggest fan of. But hey, they're legit. I ain't giving anyone any clout here because they sell stupid courses. That's my only beef against them. Uh, they're actually legitimately good people. And then there's ones that are complete scum of the earth. Um, th there are it's, it's usually one or the other. It's either they're really good or they're really scummy. Um, really, if you want to know if you got a scummy guru or not, if, if they have a program to take out a home equity line of credit on, on you and your mom's house, and they offer you a 12.5% loan, to do their $45,000 program, then you know they're pretty scummy, right? Um, there are some bad ones or some good ones, right? And, and so just, I do want to let everyone know, I do make nice fun and games. Um, there are some people I do sell wholesaling courses that are legitimate stand-up people that uh, I know I don't talk about, but I do know, um, or I might know, not know some of them, but I know of them. Uh, and I got nothing, I got no bad info on them and they're good people, but there are many that are very bad. Um, and just so give everyone that FYI out there. Um, it's not all bad. If you don't sell, if you sell whole, wholesaling course, you're not automatically the, the worst person on the world earth. Uh, but there are some really bad ones. And so, you know, the ones that are really bad, I always, uh, karma always catches up. But the reason why is to bring awareness that I have a free real estate wholesaling course. It's called freewholesaling.com where I teach wholesaling real estate absolutely for free. Unfortunately, it is. To this day, the only wholesaling course on the internet that is completely free, step-by-step step from marketing all the way to selling the deal, virtual wholesaling, AI, all these things, freewholesaling.com, uh, pretty epic, pretty cool. You got to go to freewholesaling.com to learn exactly how to wholesale real estate absolutely for free. And uh, that's it. So uh, what I want to do is answer some questions you guys have, uh, see what I can do to help you guys out, learn wholesaling real estate, and uh, go from there. We, let's, let's, start, let's start off with a heavy hitter. David West is my local RIA real estate investing association. Uh, says, let's see here. Do I have a guru texting me? Oh boy. People do. Uh, says my local RIA charges $38,000. And that's the discounted price. It used to be 27 grand, but they're mostly realtors. Yet they called wholesaler greedy for wanting more than 10 can a deal. Same realtors that'll collect, uh, what is it, thirty k on a uh, on a big on a million dollar house, right? It's hilarious to me. But we, we got to understand here is realtors, man. <laughs> They're up to thirty eight grand to learn wholesaling. No, you know, I can't say it because you don't know exactly who I'm talking about. Snap. Uh, there used to be people out here that say, oh, you know, we got we to adjust our wholesaling uh, coaching fees because, you know, inflation's gone up, right? Okay. <laughs> it's hilarious to me, but do not be paying 38 grand to learn wholesaling. I, these are some of these gurus that I talk about. 38 grand, come on. Come on. It's hilarious. Uh, Freelsing.com. I clicked the button, it don't work. Well, Ghost Boy Swift. Like, if you go to freelancing.com and don't pop up, I, that's your fault, man. Like, I literally, I, I let me type it on my phone right now. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm wasting time doing this, but like, people say, people say, oh, uh, people say the audio don't work. People say this stuff. Freewholesaling.com pops up. Um, you go to flipthework.com if you want. There's a link in the bio to freelancing.com. Uh, it's on there. Go incognito tab if you're nuts. But I'll tell you this, and I'll tell anyone, if you don't have the mental wherewithal to type in freelancing.com on your domain, you do not have what it takes to get into wholesaling. I'm just being, if you do not know how to go to Google and search freewholesaling.com on the top hand corner or on the top, you will not do well in wholesaling. Because if you can't do that, you can't even email your title company, right? You, you can't like, just being honest with you. Okay. If you don't know how to work in computer and if you're not smart enough to just click free wholesaling.com in your domain, you probably don't have what it takes. And I've said this a lot, but like if you don't have the patience of going through the whole course, that is literally a free course, by the way, most people, I, I could probably charge seven grand for this, right? If you don't have the patience to go through all the videos in the course, you probably don't have the patience to 
Cole call a motivated seller and get a wholesaling deal. It's sad, but it's true. Go through the whole course, learn how to do this business, and you go from there. It's hilarious to me the people that I, they can't do it, right? Oh, I don't know where your contracts are. If you can't figure out where the contracts are, you probably can't figure out how to talk to a seller. Crazy to me. Let's see here. Like, for example, California B says, Zach, is there one market you suggest for virtual? There's so many great markets, my man. Um, if you're in California, West Coast, I think Fresno is a decent market to be going after. I'd probably stick to that one. Dream Chasers, I've seen so many Novation courses uh, popping up lately, some with wholesaling MLS. You know me, I ain't a big wholesaling MLS guy. I, I will never, I don't think I'll ever uh, be a wholesaling MLS dude. It's just the, the amount of work that you have to do is utterly ridiculous. Not a big fan of it. Let's see. Let's see. So California is mentioning someone's course. He's mentioning names. I'm not popping this person on here. Um, but they said uh, he, he paid for this person's course and clearly they got the same info as me. It's the trick. Like, I'll tell you, most people that like have a 8, 9, 10, 12, 15, $20,000 wholesaling course, they will literally go to my course and they'll make their own version of every single video I have and then sell an $8,000 course, a $9,000, $10,000 course, have a paid, a paid ads on YouTube about it. And they will get a ton of people to pay it. And they're just using the same info as me. Now, am I going to sue them? No. I, I truly believe wholesaling, wholesaling real estate should be open information. If you're stupid enough to pay $10,000 for those same videos, you can go to my course and get for free. Go do it, right? Um, I'm just saying like, it's crazy to me. Uh, so what I want to do is let's do some one-on-one -on -one links. Uh, let's do some one-on-one -on -one calls. If you want to hop on a one-on-one -on -one call with me, here's a StreamYard link. Let me post it on here. Where is it? StreamYard right here. Pretty easy, pretty simple. And uh, you can go in there and talk to me absolutely for free. So uh, first off here, we got uh, Brady Clark. What's up, man? What's up, Zach? Hey, Dude, I saw your uh, post, man. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, man. Um, so with the probates, a lot of the leads that I get, they don't want to sell the house right away. A lot of them tell me, you know, call them like six months down the line. You know, what approach do you think I should take to explain to them that, you know, it's possible to sell the property for the probates complete? So on some of that, what's the six month thing? Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't force things. So you got to ask them, why do you want to wait six months? Yeah. And they usually say, you know, the probate's still going on and stuff. And like, they're like, you know, I don't want to really want to deal with it right now is what they say. Okay. Have you ever grieved a loved family member? Yeah. Yeah. I understand that, that portion of it. Yeah. I just, when people are grieving, they, they got other things on their mind than selling the house. And so until that point happens, you have to understand a lot of people will use an excuse because they're grieving. And until you've really been in that moment, you don't understand it crazy. It seems like you do, but like you can't force someone that's grieving to go do things. It just, it's not a good thing to do. Um, you, you know that though. And so if they truly believe it's only the probate process and they're kind of more focused on the money and getting it over with, then sure, go do it. But if they're more like, hey, I don't want to deal with it right now, put them on the follow-up. Okay. Uh, the one thing you can always educate, well, okay, just letting you know, you can sell it inside of the probate process. I have lawyers at my title company that would love to help you with this. But hey, it's ultimately up to you. You have my phone number here. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. Wait, what do you mean I can sell in the probate, right? Now, if they don't ask a question about this, so they say, wait, what do you mean? I can I can? Then you know they're not really like grieving. If that makes I'm, that's a rough thing to say, but it's true. Yeah, but if they're really truly like upset with things. They're they're like, okay, thank you, and then they go right, and right. that's okay. You don't want to be uncomfortable with them, and that's kind of the question I ask is because like if they start asking questions or they're curious of what you just said, you know you kind of have them on the hook. If they're grieving. Hey, go to the next one. Okay. 
Yeah, so do you think those are ones I should follow up with like a few weeks later or like every few weeks or so? Oh, yeah, a few weeks. A week to two weeks. Okay. Without a shadow of a doubt, man. Okay. And I've been getting a good amount of government lists, but I tell the government workers that it's for like a school research project. What do I tell them next time I ask for it? Because I ask for them on email using AI prompts. And, you know, the government workers, they'll look back and be like, oh, I gave them this because of the school project and whatnot. I mean, you look pretty young. Just keep it a school project. Okay. Why not? I mean, are they going to question you? Doubt it. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay. You're fine, man. Don't don't worry about it. Can we talk about your deal? Yeah. Let's do it. Tell me about it. Let, let me let me show everyone. Okay. If you're not part of wholesaling houses for real, what are you missing out? Shout out to Brady, man, right over here. <laughs> out here doing deals, making money. It's What's up it. with this? Is that the seller? Yeah, it's a seller. Let's talk about this. Yeah, so Craigslist lead. Oh, digital bandit sign? No, that wasn't the digital bandit sign. Uh, I did go on a few appointments from those, but um, this one was about a month and a half ago. Craigslist met the seller, had to do a bunch of addendums to it because, um, well, the buyer, he wanted a lower price because they did the inspection and uh, there's foundational issues. We had to do that one addendum and then... From that point, the seller had a false mortgage on his property. So we had to do four more addendums to it because um, we just had to push back the closing date and stuff. Jesus. But it finally closed on Thursday. Congrats, man. Thank you. It's got to feel good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Congrats, man. Well, you did good, dude. I'm proud of you. Uh, we're on the next one, man, right? When's the next deal coming? Sure. Soon. Um, I'm closing in. I'm doing a joint venture with my buddy. Okay. And um, we're closing in on a commercial property up in, uh, it's up north Wisconsin, but that'll go through soon. It'll be like 2.5K each. It's Let's go. Bad. Okay. I mean, I don't even care, dude. Like I'm getting, getting there. deals. Like I'm not mad about it. So, Dude, how can you be mad about it? You're, get, you're getting better, dude. You're making more money. Yes, sir. It's all well, about thanks to Hey. It's where it's all about, man. Yes, sir. And I'll keep um, it up. Thank you. You got any other questions? Yes. So, with it's a weird situation with the second deal. We trust the buyer, I think, but um, he wants to do a. Do you know what a WB eleven is? I'm sure you do. It's like the normal like real estate contract. For what state? Wisconsin. Yeah, maybe you don't then. No, we don't. We don't do JVs in Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, is that just a standard Wisconsin one, though? Yes, it is. And the the seller and the buyer want to do a WB eleven, but I don't think that it's assignable. But we're ba so it's four hours away from us, and um, we're gonna have them deal just um, <clears throat> just the seller and the buyer, no assignment of contract, and then the oh, it's the, it's the Wisconsin board one. Okay. Let me read it up. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Closing, earnest money. Time of the essence. Real estate condition report. Oh, God, this is annoying. I know. I know. Um, inspection contingency, obviously. Is there an assignability on this? I don't know. But what we're thinking of doing is just he's going to like pay us individually, but we're going to write up a separate contract that like confirms that. But I don't, I don't know if that's a great idea. Secondary offer, closing. Oh, my Lord, dude. I know. Conv there should be something about assignability on here. I'm sure I could add it. What in the world, dude? Jeez, Louise. Uh, you're going to have to read this, man, because it's a lot of pages. There are 621 lines. Yeah, I know. Contract, my man. Um, it should be good. I mean, what I would personally do, because I'm a lazy bum, is yeah. I would just copy all the wording, and then I would literally just find the word assignability and just see where it says it on here, because it's it's with all these lines, I know it's somewhere in, in here. Yeah, control F it. 
Yeah, control F it. So can you do that really quick and show I just want to make sure you can assign with this contract. Yeah, let me check that out real quick. Apply financing commitment right to cure. Right on testing. These contract I mean, I've done a lot of these stupid little long ones. Yeah. There's a uh, forty pages of just conditions. Condition report, time of the essence. Because if not, it should be a naturally an assignable contract. Because it should specifically say if you can assign it or not. I mean, it's probably possible for me to just save this as my own and just add that this contract is assignable. It'll be a little fraudulent. Depends on what you do on this, though, if you ch start changing things out. Because then you're fraudulently th thinking the person right down on there. Uh, yeah, you're gonna have to read the assignability part on this because I'm not gonna control F this right here. Did you do it? Yeah, I can't. I can't see anything about assignable. Okay. It says if property is currently leased and lease extent beyond closing, seller shall assign seller's rights under. Okay, that's not. That doesn't have anything to do with assignability. No. Um. It would be. Yeah, I don't see anything on that. Yeah, no, it usually, I mean, every board one has an assignability portion of it that if the assignability, if it is the, it's the binding of the assignability because you can assign it and still be bound to it. But mm -hmm. they have all these right about if the first, if the seller is foreign or not foreign. And There's too ridiculous. much of this contract. And if that's what they want, then sure. There's nothing saying you can't assign it. Okay. So I, I think, I mean, this should be fine. I mean, I'm not going to go on the whole thing on this, but if you control death, this thing, and it doesn't talk about assignability, I mean, yeah. I would just ask the title company really quick if you can assign with this contract. Okay. But if it's not stated, it should be assumed for most of them. Yeah. Let me read one last part here. Strike one if the prepaid rent. Title not acceptable for closing if the title is not acceptable. Delivery of title. Oh, wait. Coverage municipal. Oh my gosh, this is destroying. This is so stupid. I know. Okay, I, I could really appraisal contingency. This literally has every aspect except for the assignment. It's just kind of crazy to me. You should be able to assign this one. Okay. Wow. If. Seven lines on radon right testing. Oh, wait. Inspection contingency. Caution. Sufficient time for the home inspection. 15 days is on this one. You have if it's not, if nothing's done on this for an inspection. What in the world? No legal access to the, wait, no legal access to the property. Uh, property condition. Okay. Yeah, this is so crazy. You should be fine on this one. At least 30 days to disbursement. Yeah. Uh, if there's nothing crazy rent on it, you should be fine. Okay. I read, read it. Let me see if there's any comments saying about if there's a there's line on there. But I believe if you control that fit and it has one thing about assignability. James says, this is just his, he's not a lawyer, I don't think, but Yes, the WV11 form is assignable under certain conditions. This means the buyer can transfer their rights under the contract to another party. Okay. Okay. Wait, oh, section 25. 25. Section 25. All right, let's read it up. I think it's important if you're from... Section 25. Nope, that's about water systems. Yeah. Two... Line 67. Yeah. Home. Yeah. The, the, this don't have anything on there. Um, yeah. I don't see under section 25 of this one. Maybe I'm under the wrong one. I'm looking at the same one you're looking at. Yeah. No, no big deal. Um, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, a, if it's not written on there, it should say it as long as it says you can't. Okay. If you sign something saying you can assign it, then you're kind of in trouble, but you'd be good, man. I think it'd be fine. Ask your title company though. Okay.
And um, the thing was, is what we were going to do is um, the, the buyer was going to deal directly with the seller and just kind of throw us a, a finder's fee under a separate contract because they did not like both of our, our contracts. They didn't like our contracts. Who, the, the buyer or the seller? The buyer and the seller. All right. Josh says WB11 to sign up. That's what I thought, but just making sure. I mean, wait, so the seller didn't like the contract? Yeah, the buyer didn't as well. Is the seller a uh, lawyer? Like, why does he not like it? Um, it's an, like an older lady, or not an older lady, but like an aging lady. And uh, she just doesn't like it, I guess. An aging lady? Asian. <laughs> Asian? So she, she's not great with the language, you know what I mean? That doesn't change anything. I know, but they both don't like it. So, um, all right. If it's assignable, it's assignable. I don't really care. Whatever the words on the paper make you feel better about yourself. But like, sure, right. we can put a, we can put thirteen lines on radon testing if it makes you feel better about yourself. I mean, contracts at the end of the day are agreements between people, and for wholesaling, it's about just how much you're willing to buy the house for. So go after it. Okay. It's it's weird to me that people get crazy about contracts, but. I know. Um, that's fine. Usually when I'm aggressive with a seller, it's fine. It's the buyer that's like, I already told you about this one, but it's fine, man. Don't worry about it. Okay. But do you think we should assign it or do you think we should just do what we were going to do? Wait, what were we going to do on it? So what we were going to do is have the buyer deal directly with the seller and just do like a deal. And then we have another contract written up, just basically a finder's fee saying that he will pay us for a finder's fee. But I don't know how secure that is. I wouldn't do that. I just do a strict assignment. Okay, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Well, uh, if you got any more questions, let me know, man. Love to help you out. Yeah, one more question. Is it possible to wholesale city-owned properties? Legally, yes. In practice, no. That makes mm. sense. Like, you can do it. You can theoretically score 100 points in a game in basketball. Yeah. Right? You could theoretically be in, in, on the Miami Heat right now. Yeah, it's possible. You know, it, it's it's a possibility, but are you going to really do it? No. True. Yeah. Right. But I mean, how do you get in contact with the city? I mean, it sounds like it's you. Not, you call right. whoever whoever's in charge. It's okay. like if I would be the next quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, I can call the phone number. Are they going to let me be the quarterback? No. Yeah. Right. I'm just telling you, like. <laughs> The, 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 there's a struggle to this, but people do that. People buy houses from the city all the time. So it is possible for you. Wholesaling is going to be a lot more difficult to do though. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Zach. Appreciate it, man. All right. All right. Next here we got Corbin. Hey Zach. How's it going? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm calling you today to see what your thoughts are on selling houses that are in good condition. Okay, done it before. Um, so I have, I have, I have this guy. Uh, he wants to sell it for a lot cheaper than it's worth to me, but it's got a full remodel already done to it. Um, all the other houses in the area are selling for really high, but he's giving it to me for very low, and he's already said he's all right with me not working with his realtor we'll just do a contract and all that but i haven't done anything yet because i don't know if it's a good idea to be wholesaling a house that's in like such a good condition okay so i mean what are you asking me like do like you want it, permission to make money yeah, like it is it i'm giving that you, corbin i'm giving you to permission to make money i see all right. Write yeah. up a contract. If if all of what you're saying is true, man, uh -huh. sometimes sometimes you get a gift. You just got to accept it. Yeah, it, it does sound like a little weird because I'm, um, but he he's really low on the price for some reason. But um, here's the thing, man. It's two things have always happened in my life. Sometimes gifts just fall in my lap, and I just got to take it as a blessing. Yeah. And just give it back to the universe. And other times, it's too good to be true, and it's oh, and it was. Yeah. Here's the problem, man. It's a, it's very hard for me to figure it out until I actually like go through with it. I've had deals where it seemed, oh my gosh, wow. So let me give you two examples. One I had on the YouTube channel, one I did not. 
The one on the YouTube channel that was, it was in perfect condition. The guy just wanted to build another house and it was weird. And I would just, I made like 40 K on it. It was, it had no need, no work needed to be done. Literally just wholesale it like that. I was like, okay, 40 K like I, weird. <laughs> yeah. Weird. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And then I had another one where it was the same thing. I was like, oh my gosh, this is happening again. Yes. And the guy literally did that because he had a $195,000 child support loan from another mm -hmm. state that he thought maybe if I bought it for cash, the court record of the title would not see it. And he could actually get the money and screw the uh, child support person trying to get the money. And yeah. obviously it did not happen. And it was too good to be true. He had such a big fat child support loan that he thought he could kind of screw the system and oh. just try to sell it cheap to get me to buy it for cash. Yeah. And it was just too good to be true. <laughs> yeah. Tail two tapes though, man. If I thought I was going to get screwed, I wouldn't make money on both of them. But I'm like, yeah. okay, fine. We'll let title go through it and see if this guy's the real owner of the property. And if he's the real owner, he wants to sell me that price. I'm going to go. Mm. So life sometimes give you gifts. You got to take it. Sometimes too good to be true. I can't tell you what it's going to be until yeah. title looks at it. Um, going about finding a cash buyer for it. Could I use Zillow to find cash buyers or would I better be better off using like deal machine is what I'm using right now. So it depends on what you want to do. Is this uh, in a nice area? Oh, oh yeah. It's um, so the Dallas Cowboys for, cause it, I'm in Dallas, Texas and there's their game stadium. And also the Texas Rangers stadium is right. It's 10 minutes down the street. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good area. It's in Arlington. Wow. That's yeah. great, man. Yeah, and the cowgirls are really good uh, this year, so that's awesome. Um, congrats to them today. Love to see it. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, they, they're like the dolphins, man. And I don't get into it. Um, but what I could tell you is, good location though. I like it. Mm -hmm. So that's probably a good rental place. So yes, Zillow is going to be good. Yeah, man. I love talking smack on the Cowboys because I have fans, I have friends that are Cowboys fans, and every year is their yeah. year. Um, but yeah, but what I could tell you is. It's that's probably a good rental place. Yeah, so that's, what why, that's why. Call so you know what to do, man. Call the yeah. four rents around the area. See if you can find a guy or gal who wants to buy it. And if I, not, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I it was funny because I didn't even find this property. This they had it on Zillow for a while, a little bit, and the guy's wife uh email or texted me on my Craigslist ad because I used the AI command they used in wholesale.com. Just texted me up one day while I was working at my nine to five, you know, <laughs> and she was like, "Hey, let's sell this." It took a, it, I little. I'm glad I kind of, or I don't know. I, we'll see in the future if I'm glad if I took the time to actually talk with them. But it took me about three days to get them down on quite a good uh, price. Um, but you get lucky. Surprised. You put working, dude. If you're <laughs> thinking like magically this deal came about because you're just so blessed and lucky. You put in work, dude. I yeah. always say more, the more work you put in into this business, the luckier you get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, dude, I, you've yeah, been sure. putting in work, man. This is why this is happening. It's not because it's magic, dude. Yeah, I do I do make calls every day and uh, learn new stuff from you as well. So yeah. It's, yeah. See, I get lucky making millions of dollars. <laughs> I put yeah. the work in and the luck came. Yeah. All right. Well, um, hmm. Any other so questions? what you need to do is cold call the four months in the area. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't yeah. work, you can try the Facebook hack we have in the free course, right? Uh, Posting those things. Uh, I, I think I, I I don't know. I posted it in one of the our active cash buyer don't post locations. The address. Don't post the address. Yeah, I did. I made sure not to do that. I Good just stuff. put I just put pictures and then I a little bit and then I said DM me for more pictures and more info. Um, I, I didn't put. Yeah. Um. I, I would just literally say I have a three two. Good will cash flow by the um, Arlington Stadium. Yeah, that, um, that's what I did. I put in a prompt, no my own prompt on ChatGPT, a square footage, bed, bath. Be like, it's net close to the this and this stadium. And then I just post on. And now I don't know if it successfully made it on there. I haven't checked, but because um, some of the some of the I have, I'm in a few different Facebook uh, Facebook groups for this look. Are uh, my location, but some the what are they? The moderators for them are sometimes a bit uh wary. I don't know. No, I so, know. Yeah, you can go to dmzac.com or whatever you're using and just cold call the cash sales too. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I mean, just go go crazy, man. You get this deal. Make sure you have a qualified person, though. That's yeah. okay with an assignment. Yeah, I mean, I, Dallas I've is been... so easy to sell deals, dude. Like it, it's, I, I I'm not even telling you JV with me because I need you to start doing some deals. And yeah, that's what like, that's what I was thinking about too. Like maybe JVing with you too. But I was yourself, like, man, make <laughs> if this is a really good deal, make the full money. Oh yeah, I feel really like good. I could. You make, don't work this hard not to. Yeah, I could probably make like uh over fifty thousand for this old offer or for this you offer if I were grand by yourself and then give me a 10 or twenty thousand dollar deal and then we can split that okay all right i got you You do the fifty thousand yourself though okay all right i got you you're like so close man all right <laughs> go do it you know what to do man all right all right i'll do that for you and i'll call you back with it all right show me the check i'm excited right. uh-huh i'll see you Appreciate thank it. you boom guys it's the truth the harder you work the luckier you get why am i here today because i'm so lucky Number one, I was born in the United States of stinking America. Number one. Number two, put in the work. That's it. The only reason I'm so lucky when it comes to being good at cold calling is by just doing the work and being uncomfortable. And so the more money you make, the luckier you get has always come from the work you do. So put in the work. Go to freerealestyne.com. You'll learn how to wholesale real estate episode for free. Now I'll see you soon. This is Zach and signing up. Have a blessed one. Thank you guys.